everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. It is time for more fall sewing projects! Yay! I don't know about you, but I feel like that's pretty much all that I am really watching on YouTube right now too, is like fall sewing everything. And hopefully that's what you're into too, because that's what's happening here. We are going to be moving on to another jumper dress project using this fabric right here. These are actually the skirt pieces already cut out for this project, because if you saw my video on the pumpkin pinafore, then you will know that I cut out all of my skirt pieces for three of my four fall projects all at once, which honestly was a great idea. So this is the third project well, there's still half of one to go, but it's the third skirt portion project. And this is a gathered circle skirt, or this will be when it's sewn together, a gathered circle skirt. So the real question is, what am I doing for the bodice? And for this bodice, I wanted something a little bit simpler and a little bit plainer and also a little bit more. So I wanted this to have a higher neck. I still can't decide if I want a boat neck or a round neck, We'll see what happens with that. But I want it to be a higher neck and I want the straps to be built in one with the bodice. And if you watched this video, which I will link up above by the way, then you will know that I struggled with that. That was originally my idea for the pumpkin pinafore as well. And I struggled with getting something like that to fit. So I'm hoping that this week we can do that. I don't know yet if I'm going to wind up having to have like a center front seam for something like that, but I have found a new pattern that I am hoping to use for this. We'll see how it goes, but it is actually, I believe, a new Simplicity pattern. It's Simplicity 9006, and you're going to laugh at what this looks like. Yeah, I know, right? The reason that I chose this one, besides the fact that it was on sale, is that all it is is actually a basic bodice block. So if you look at this portion of the pattern, you can see that it is just a really basic bodice block, darts going here, darts going here, darts in the back, and then a zipper up the center back, because that's the other thing that I would like to do for this project is a center back zipper. Of course, my skirt right now doesn't have a center back seam, so that means that I will wind up having to, I guess, cut one of those skirt panels down the center back to give myself that, but that way I can just do a center back closure all the way up because this is going to be a much higher backed jumper and I'm going to need that sort of entry into it. So that's my plan. I'm going to go ahead and cut out these pattern pieces to begin with and then do a mock-up of this bodice pattern. And I'm not doing the sleeves or anything on this, by the way. I'm ignoring the sleeves. I'm going to make this sleeveless because it's a jumper, but I'm using this pattern for the shape of the bodice. So I have my mock-up right here. I want to address some changes that I made to the pattern, most of which came from size or length differences, but I did also do things like change the neckline here. You can see I drew a two right here, so that went up two inches. This actually went up two inches. So basically I just lengthened the bodice by two inches from like around here up, and, uh, and otherwise it stayed relatively the same. I did narrow the shoulder because I am making this a sleeveless jumper dress, not, you know, a bodice with a sleeve. And I think, oh, and then I went three eighths inches out here at the waist. And I also went a half inch out at the center front because this goes up to a size 22 and I would be a size 24. So that's where I decided to make that change. I don't think it was the right answer but that's where I did it. And then on the back, I changed the neckline. This time I actually folded it down, but I changed the neckline again, changed the arm's eye, narrowing it out a little bit here. And I also extended at the waist here. And then here I extended half inch down that way uh, at the waist and then one and a half inches up this way to make up that two inch difference. However, my math must have been off because I swear I laid them next to each other. But once I actually put the dart in, because there's a dart on the front piece in the side, once I actually put the dart in, the sides did not quite match. So we're off by about three eighths of an inch there. I'm not sure what happened there. And I have mentioned this in other videos, but whenever I'm doing something that is a back closing bodice, I try to find an alternate place to use 
as an opening for the fitting of the mock-up. So for right now, I have closed up the center back seam and I've left the side, the right hand side seam open because that one is easiest for me to access. It's not great, but it's easier. So now we get to try this on. So I'm just holding it shut at the moment because it is still really hard to pin the side up, but holding it seems to be, you know, it can at least tell me what's going on. And naturally my favorite issue is rearing its ugly head, the I am super, super gappy above the bust issue. Ugh. I want to learn the magic fix to fix this without putting in a center front seam. But I don't know that I have the patience right now to learn how to do that. So I think I might have to center front seam this. I really didn't want to. It's also tempting me to if, no, that wouldn't be good. It was almost tempting me to like, if I do a center front seam, maybe I should just also make the center front seam long enough to have like a button closure, but then that goes into the skirt too. And I don't want to do that. So I think I might do a fake button closure on the center front seam just to hide the fact that there's going to be a seam there, but I just don't feel like messing around with any other way to fix this issue. The arm size are also way too tight. Like I think going to be way too tight period. So I definitely have to open them up, but the only other real issue is that giant fin that happens above the bust that I can't seem to get rid of. So I'm going to fix the arm size first, and then I'm going to pin this out and see if that fixes things if I put in a center front seam. All right, I have altered the arm size. This one I have now also folded in, but you can see the unfolded shape here. And I have created the center front seam, which meant that I was able to do up this seam, get a better idea of the fit. And by doing the center front seam, I have realized that I need seam allowance at the waist. So I unfortunately won't be able to use this as my lining because of that, but I think I can use this as a bodice block going forward because the only alteration is going to be that add a half an inch for seam allowance at the center front at the bottom. I've drawn a line here of where this is going to get cut away so you can see how much excess was up here. And I'm also trying to figure out the neckline shape right here because I, right now it's, it's very V and I wasn't going for a V. I wanted something rounder or even boat neck. I've decided I don't want boat neck at this point. It would just be yeah, I, I don't No, I don't think I want it because I don't want higher than this, honestly, because then anytime that I wear a blouse underneath that has any sort of neckline decoration or anything like that, you're not going to see any of it. So I want a little bit wider of a neckline and I'm thinking maybe here, but maybe even wider. I think what I might do is cut it to here and then once it's all together, I can figure out before I bind it what exactly if it needs to be any bigger like maybe a larger scoop or something like that but again I think that the level here is good and honestly like all the darts fit great back fits great so apparently the changes that I made were pretty darn on point and then just correcting it into a center front closure I mean matching the pattern is going to be interesting which is why I very well might be hiding that with some large buttons up the front. But other than that, I think that this is going to be really nicely fitted. Even, I think even everywhere, like at the waist is hitting me exactly where it needs to be to attach to the skirt. Like, yes, this is a great mock-up. So I am now going to go ahead and carefully, well, I'm going to trim off the excess here and then carefully cut out the bodice, trying as hard as I can to match the pattern. Again, with a pattern like this, I don't know exactly how feasible that's going to be on a curved seam, but we are going to give it a go. So I'm having a bit of a time with the placement of getting the other side because I cut this one out on the straight grain because I mean, that's how it should be cut out on the straight grain and then tried to find the opposite and realized this pattern is on the diagonal. You can see this is the straight grain right here, but the pattern is a diagonal plaid or check or whatever this is, which means that if I wanted to get like a chevron look, which would be, you know, ideal, that opposite look, then I would have had to have cut this, I think on the 
bias question mark I'm really not sure I can still get it to get the opposite if I do it on the opposite grain but I feel like that is gonna be weird to play around with I mean it might mean it might be okay if like the interior is on the straight grain and the exterior one of them is on the cross grain because like this looks much more satisfying I mean you know if it was laid out correctly there we go that's a little better that looks so much more satisfying than having the like stripes just keep going on the other side I don't really like that whereas this is like ooh, look at that I just hope that it doesn't like act weird on and wear weirdly by doing this on the cross grain but I, I think this is how it needs to be. And I don't have enough fabric left to like recut them both on the bias, which I think would also get that. But then also then it's on the bias. So it still wouldn't be laying right and might be laying more wrong than just doing across the grain. So I think, wish me luck. I think I'm going to try and do this on the cross grain for the other piece. And then I guess maybe the back might have to be the same thing. I don't know. Ugh. And then I'll cut out the linings. So, it has been honestly, I think a full week since I have vlogged about this project. And that is because I just had Tech Week and we opened Little Women. So we just had our first three performances this weekend and it is now Sunday evening after our matinee today and I can finally return to this dress. Actually, I guess that's not entirely true. I did actually work on it yesterday. I still have not cut out the bodice pieces because I was kind of playing mind games with myself of is it going to be okay to cut them on opposite grains or what? I think at this point, honestly, I'm just going to have to go for it because if I want to get this finished like pretty much tonight if not tomorrow then I need to work on this now so I do need to cut all of that out including the lining pieces for the bodice but the skirt part is basically assembled I mean obviously this is one really big piece right now but that is because of that center back seam so I assembled this in the exact same way that I have done all of the other skirts and jumpers and stuff on my channel where there is a circle skirt and two side seams. The two side seams have pockets in them. And then this one, the one exception is that I did actually cut one of those circle pieces and put a back seam in, or I will put a back seam in. And right now I've left it undone because in my opinion, I find it easier to put in a zipper when the seam is not already done below it. So I've left it undone sometimes and I might decide to do this. Sometimes I'll do the seam up like most of the way but leave at least a few inches below where that zipper is going to end and that can be a little bit easier to manage with the skirt but I just like to have that space below and then I will finish that seam up after I put the zipper in. So anyway this is where the skirt is right now. I have run gathering stitches around the top marking the center front and obviously center back was pretty easy to see where that is and so this is ready to get attached to the bodice other than that center back seam but again that will go into the zipper. So all of that said, I am going to get to cutting. I'm going to cut all of those bodice pieces and start sewing those together so that I have something to attach this to. I thought you might all want to see my very comfy cozy kitten who likes to go in the rain and then get towel gets toweled off. And sometimes I wonder if she goes in the rain just so that she can get toweled off because she likes it so much. Okay, that's all. I'm going to get back to cutting now, but I had to interrupt my cutting to quickly and swiftly get her dry when she ran into this room like she had jumped in a lake. Right? Oh, she's purring. Actually, I do have an update to the cutting also. This isn't just for cats, uh, though I know you love seeing Dora and everything. But I went and I tried to lay out the piece that I had already cut on the fabric, trying to get some sort of something with like the opposite to get that chevron effect and it was not having it. It turns out that these squares must not be square, they must be rectangular because basically it was about an inch off if I tried to do it the opposite direction of fabric across the grain. So I am now tracing out, okay I guess Dora's dry now, I am now tracing out the pieces, the backs and the fronts on the remaining fabric that I have to see if I can cut all of them on the bias and then just have the interior 
be on the straight grain, like the lining, flat lining be on the straight grain. And I think if I can cut these all on the bias that I'll get a nice effect. I don't know, I mean the backs, the backs are just gonna wind up being straight up and down. Actually, I guess I should check it what the fronts are gonna be. But I just want something more than a stripe going all the way across, which is what I would wind up having, at least on the fronts, if I cut them both on the straight of grain, we would get all the stripes just running like this, and that's not a good look. So I'm gonna play with this more. And this was why I had put this off in the first place last Sunday or Monday or whenever that was. And I'm going to hopefully be able to cut everything out of this little piece of fabric that I still have left. It's been, I think, an hour since I last talked to you, and I have been trying all sorts of different configurations to get this right, and finally I thought I had it right, so I went and I cut out one side, but I'll bet you might notice that the white line goes from a black white to an orange white as it crosses the body, and yes, also it is a continuous which I had conceded on to, you know, have it go continuous because I thought it looked better than having them horizontal because then it would just look like horizontal stripes and it didn't look good. Also because the fabric is not like woven on grain, it's printed off grain, the horizontal thing just wasn't going to work anyway. So yeah, um, I just realized that I cut it so that it's orange and then black or black and then orange and not black all the way across or orange all the way across and now I've got one of the back pieces cut out and I'm trying to cut out the other back piece and again it's probably going to take me two hours to cut out that one other piece too because this fabric is just ridiculous. So note to self or note to all of you when you are working with a plaid that you want to like play with plaids and make them cool patterns and stuff like that don't get a plaid that is printed on the diagonal or you will be in the same case that I'm in right now. So it is a couple of hours later and I flatlined the bodice with twill, lightweight twill, because I didn't have any Kona, which is what I would have liked to use. And then I did the darts and assembled it and it doesn't match at all in the front. So that's great. I may or may not try and make it match tomorrow but I've been on my feet way too long today, so this is it for today. If I don't try to make it match, all that I have to do is attach the skirt, do the zipper and that back seam in the skirt, and bind the neckline and the arm size. If I do try to make it match, then there's who knows what that might go into trying to make it match. So I'm leaning towards ignoring it and hoping that it doesn't bother me because this project should have been done by like this morning, not tomorrow. So hopefully I will get to be able to finish this tomorrow, but I'm not sure, but I'm going to bed, so good night. So it is a new day and I have obviously put on the top of the bodice here, or the bodice here, just to see if I want to change the center front or not. And I looked at it in the mirror and from about like, I don't know, four feet away from the mirror, I could not tell that the lines weren't matching up. They looked like they were. When I got about two feet away from the mirror, I could tell that they were not matching up. But I think I'm gonna leave it as is, at least for now. The one thing that I'm still wondering about, and I'm not gonna decide on this until after I put the skirt in and maybe even the zipper in probably, because then I can really see it without like holding it back here, is I think the neckline is still gonna be too high. I mean, it's gonna come down a little bit with the binding, but I feel like this is just a little too high for a jumper dress. Even though I was going for a higher neckline, I feel like it might just still be too high. So anyway, that is where I am at at the moment. I am ready to attach the skirt on this and then to set the zipper. I'm also a little bit wondering if it is actually gonna be too large. I'm not gonna be able to tell until I put the zipper in, but I guess like once I do put the zipper in, I could most likely adjust that from the center front or, you know, the sides or something like that if it does wind up being too large. So hopefully it won't be and I won't have to reset the zipper multiple times, but that's where I'm at currently. Yeah, I think everything else is okay. I, I do wonder a little bit if it's a hair too long in the back, but I think, I think it's gonna be okay. 
And if it is, I might just shorten it by the shoulder. <laughs> so, okay, that's where we're at. I'm gonna go put the skirt on. All right, so skirt is attached to the bodice and I was just checking the fit on the bodice. It is definitely too big. Like I have pinched out, I think about a one inch seam allowance here and here and the top of the center back. So obviously it is one inch too big because it should be a half inch seam allowance. So that's easy though. I mean, before I even put the zipper in, I can just get rid of that extra half inch. There's also some puffing that's going on right here. So I need to smooth this curve down a little bit right here, but that will be very, very easy. And the neckline is starting to grow on me. So I might leave it as is, we'll see how that goes. The other thing though, is that I attached the skirt and I don't know if it was optical illusion or what caused by the pattern or if it really was too long, but it looked like the bodice was dipping down right here. And so I have already taken that up. I just made that seam allowance larger between these two darts, tapering it to half inch by the time it gets to the darts. But I feel like it is still dipping down from here at the sides. I think it's really exactly where it needs to be. But I think right here we're low. I think we're about a half inch too low. So the unfortunate thing about that is that if I just make that seam allowance bigger, I'm going to keep shortening the skirt too. So I think I actually need to disconnect the skirt from the bodice right here and redo this so that it is half an inch higher at the center front because it was just a little too low. The back I think we're okay, actually. I, I don't know, maybe it was just shifting in the shoulders when I was just holding it, but the back feels like the seam is hitting right at my natural waist, so that is great. So yeah, I've gotta fix this bit right here just so that it doesn't dip down, fix that, and take off the excess in the center back, which I'm gonna take it off in the bodice and then taper that out in the skirt because obviously skirtfulness is desirable. So I am gonna do all those fixes and then I can put the zipper in. So the zipper is now in. The good news is I was still able to pull it on over my head, which probably shouldn't have because that does mean it might be big, but it doesn't feel big. The one thing that does feel off or that did feel off, which you can see I have that's my mom calling to give me her opinion. I'll be right back. I'm back. I had actually just called my mom to talk about the same thing that I'm going to talk to you about here, which is, as I was starting to say, I think, the waist was too low. So I'm actually taking up the shoulders by probably about like three quarters of an inch here on each side there. So I'm just gonna pinch that out. And because of that, I will take out, scoop out the arm size a little bit more here. And honestly, I think I wanna open up the arm size just overall, because even once the seam allowance is folded in here, I just think it's too wide across on both sides. I don't know if I'm gonna fully just take it in, like narrow it here, or if I'm gonna narrow it here too, I think, because the other bit is that, especially with pulling up the shoulders, this has become too high. It was already kind of too high, I think, but it's definitely become too high. So I know I don't want it any higher than right here. And so I think I might, scoop this out fully like this. I'll probably have to like draw it on and see how it looks and scoop that out and just open up this a little, open up that a little. I think the back, uh, I think the back is good, which is good because that's where the zipper is and I don't want to mess with the zipper. But the zipper went in really pretty well. I mean, there's like an eighth of an inch maybe off where the waist is, but it's such a busy pattern that it's really not noticeable at all. So I'm just gonna leave it. And the seam went together really well down the center back of the skirt. So once I figure out this bit, I can bind those off. And then I'm going to sew the binding down on the inside by hand, cause that is just what I prefer. I'm just gonna bind it with prepackaged bias tape. So I think I've got like an ivory or something I can use. And then it needs a hem. I haven't checked yet to see if the hem fell out on this. I've mentioned this in other videos, but generally speaking, when you have especially a circle skirt, part of your hem, whatever's on the bias, is going to stretch out farther. So you have to wind up leveling your hem after hanging it out for a while. Well, I cut this at this point, I don't even know, three, four weeks ago, something like that. And I have noticed that with the other fabrics that I got at the same time as this, so the pumpkin dress and the spooky spider web dress, those circle skirts did not stretch out. I know, I was weirded out by it too. So I'm really hoping, 
fingers crossed, knock on wood, that this one maybe didn't either and I can just do an even like small turned hem all the way around. So I hope that's the case because that makes it so much easier. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out the arm's eye neck whole situation. All right, so here is neckline take two and sleeve or arm's eye, I guess, take two. I like this so much better. I think this is in really a pretty darn perfect place, perfect shape. And the straps are so much better now too. I feel like now it looks like, oh, she's wearing a jumper dress, not, oh, she didn't put the sleeves on her dress. <laughs> <laughs> which I think was the territory that I was going into before. So these are ready now to be bound and I'm going to check my hem to see if maybe I can just fold that over and sew it hopefully and then that's it. So I guess the next thing you'll see will be the final reveal. of a process what with Tech Week kind of getting in the middle of this project but overall I am very very pleased with the outcome. I think it's looking very like early 1960s which is really what I was going for especially with the little blouse underneath which this blouse is an old one from Target by the way and I'm just really quite happy with it. I also want to see what it looks like with a belt. I think that that could be really fun and changing up like the blouse options underneath. It does have the higher neckline so it makes it, I don't know, very different than a lot of my other jumper dresses as far as playing with like the neckline versus the neckline of what's underneath. So I think that's going to be fun styling this different ways but I am super happy to add this to my wardrobe and it is yet again another super spinny skirt. <laughs> which has totally been my vibe this last year. So anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Angela. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing! No, not the muddy paws! Thank you. Good boy. Okay, listen to this story. This story is about a dog. He is very cute. He's a very good boy and I'm pretending to read it out of this book that matches my dress. Are you a very good boy? You are? Okay. Did you have a good story time? Not that money.